Hello and welcome to this cryptocurrency technical analysis. We're going to be diving into the charts together and I will be answering the question of do I remain bullish on Bitcoin? Am I still looking for higher prices to come? Or actually, have we just completed a fourth wave and now this was the fifth wave up for a bigger retracement to come? I'll be answering that question inside of this video, so make sure you pay full attention to the exact words that I'm saying. And I also then, of course, I'm going to be talking you through the next levels and my current trades that I am in. I'd like to start off by picking up where I left off my last video, where I did say I was in a short position on Bitcoin. I had two shorts open at the time. Of course, now I'm no longer in them, by the way. But in the video, I had a short from the monthly and I had a short from the daily NPOC. Okay, I made it very clear and I very much tried to emphasize this. The title of the video was, is now a good time to short Bitcoin? And in that video, I hopefully made it very clear saying no, now is not a good time to short Bitcoin. Of course, we were trading down and around here, right? And I'm saying, you're too late to short. This is not a good time to short Bitcoin, okay? Actually, this is a time where I'm taking profits on my shorts. What does taking profits on a short do? It creates buying pressure, okay? So it's something that is very important. And I'm just going to emphasize this very final time because some people still, even though I very much tried my best to emphasize it's not a good time to short, just because I'm in a short from 24 hours ago, we've already now seen that move down. I'm now taking profits on those shorts and it is too late. Some people still struggle to understand that. So, I mean, I understand we must have some very much beginners watching the video, which is fine. And that's why I'm just going to spend a minute to emphasize this point for hopefully the final time. OK, and then we're going to start to look at what's happening next for the rest of the week to come and really specifically next week. I think next week's going to be a big, important week of trading. So, you know, I had these comments here after you posted a video, you said it's a good time to go short and then price pumped a thousand dollars. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know where you got the idea of me saying it's a good time to short when I made it. My biggest emphasis of now is not the time to short. I would not short it. I mean, please, you really just need to listen to what I'm saying in the videos because otherwise you are just going to wreck yourself, okay? Some of the people seem to have the same kind of problems. Me asking a question, okay, of is it now a good time to short Bitcoin in a title? Okay, I think people just read the title and just automatically think, oh, yeah, this is a good time to short. But it's like I say here, the title of the video is a question, not a statement. And in the video, I answer that question and say, no, now is not a good time to short Bitcoin, okay? And I think the majority of people did understand, like, I could have not made it any more clear. This guy's a complete newbie, and he still understood I meant not short. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this guy understood that, so he never sold and looked for higher prices too, okay? So yes, I was in two shorts before, but the thing that we need to absolutely emphasize here is I was taking profits yesterday morning, right? After that monthly short, after that daily NPOC short, we come down and we filled the CME gap. So I had patience after taking that short position for a much lower target of the CME gap fill. It took a few days to come, but I managed to get that fill of the CME gap that I wanted to see. And for me, that was a take profit on those short trades. So yes, I'm out of both those shorts now. They both got stopped out, but they both ended in, you know, actually one was totally break even and one off the daily NPOC ended in slight profits. Because I hit my take profit one on both those trades, I then get stopped on the rest of the trade, which does still equal a profitable trade. OK, so it's just something to bear in mind when we're talking about trading. OK, understand that, you know, just because I have a title saying is a good time to short question mark does definitely not correlate to now you should be short in Bitcoin. That's just definitely not something that you should be doing. In fact, I've made this clear many times. Don't listen to the title. Don't listen to the thumbnail. Listen to what I say and you will benefit and you'll reap the rewards, right? Uh, anyway, I move on and we're going to start to analyze this section, moving on to here and then again what I'm looking at next and the next levels that are going to be coming into play. So yesterday, I was obviously looking at one daily level above me of resistance. So again, I'm going to talk about what happened to that daily to educate you. I need you to understand. Um, during the day, though, Bitcoin um, obviously was ranging sideways. Ethereum actually pulled back to its point of control zone, okay? And that was a really nice support level on Ethereum. And the ES stock market also had, after that real perfect rejection from the daily, pulled back to its point of control zone too. So this is like Ethereum hitting support, but 
The main thing that we're looking at is the correlation between the stock market, ES, and Bitcoin. And even if you don't trade the stock market, I've said many times, you've got to be paying attention. So when the stock market pulls back here to a very big support level, ending in a failed auction of these lows as well, then the bounce really starts to get underway. This is very bullish for Bitcoin, okay? And here we see the first idea of, okay, this is gonna be getting a bounce. We can see a swing failure pattern onto the point of control. And as we progress, you know, this was an in, in, in live post as soon as I saw it getting hit and the bounce underway, I'm letting my team know. And then while this bounce is really starting to get underway here as we start to edge our way up, now we've got a confirmed failed auction. We've got the tap of the point of control and we're still getting some real nice strength coming into the stock market right now. This is, of course, is leaning bullish on Bitcoin. And then we start to see a massive bounce start to go. Of course, this has increased even higher in price, but I'm saying, you know, if you long that point of control on the ES, good take profit one now. If we go up even higher, perfect, right? But locking that take profit one, I myself on Bitcoin had still taken zero trades. I was gonna remain patient for one of my levels to be here. Of course, I had the daily above us, which I was remaining patient for at the time. Then I went into a champion's live stream. Uh, and during this live stream, I made uh, this prediction, which I'm gonna talk you through now. I really wanna talk you through in a lot of detail this, because I'm gonna talk about some specific order flow um, topic. And so really you need to pay full attention to what I'm about to show you. You can really benefit from this insight. So yesterday, as I was mentioning, we uh, done this contenders live stream, it was actually. And in that video, I said I would not short Bitcoin yet and I was wanting to see higher and I was remaining bullish and this was when we were coming into the daily. So the daily, the day before, earlier in the day was the level of resistance that I had. But during this live analysis stream, okay, I made it clear that I would not short yet and I wanted to see higher and I was bullish. This is the value that you can get from like this live stream as, as people are saying here. It's a great dynamic to see our real time thought processes on the charts as it's happening live in the time. And I'd like to emphasize this even more by showing you the order flow. And just let me first ask you this question and let me think, let, think to yourself what you would do here. So we've just basically hit the daily, slightly front run the daily, okay? And within the order flow, you come in here and you see 12 million now trapped longs into a resistance. What would your thought process be? You've seen the daily ever so slightly front run, okay? You've then seen 12 million longs open into that daily, and now you've seen a pullback. So visibly on the chart, you've seen a wick and a rejection. On the order flow, you also have 12 million trapped longs. The textbook scenario of this is short. This is a textbook order flow bearish. You've You've come into a level, you've seen a visible rejection, and you've also then got 12 million trapped longs into the high. You're now trading below the level, okay? My thought process, even though the textbook here is bearish, was I am not shorting yet. I am remaining bullish, and I am looking for higher prices. So I'm going against the textbook. I'm going against the general thought process. And I'd like to just show you the clip here of the video of why this was, okay? Listen here and pay attention. If you had actually shorted off at our order flow, then you're probably getting stopped out of the trade right now. And this is the thing where sometimes order flow isn't everything, right? Because I think this is what a, a sculpt trader off of a textbook would class as really perfect order flow, to be honest. Like, you had the move up into resistance, you have trapped longs, you know, a lot, you're talking about 12 million trapped longs, you have to pull back. I think, um, you know, textbook is gonna be like, this is a really good short trade. But then my thought process is basically just, no, I'm actually not gonna short this, right? And that could be wrong and we, we, we fall, right? But still, so as you see there, like even while we were still getting the pullback, my thought process was I'm not going to short here, okay? Maybe I'm wrong, right? Maybe I'm wrong and we fall. <laughs> Obviously I wasn't and I was correct and we did move up higher as I wanted to see there. But you can see how sometimes reading the order flow in the textbook scenario, if you don't have that intuition, and this is where I say so important, my friends listening to this, is experience matters. You know, a lot of people will try and argue with that fact. And it's generally the people that will say experience doesn't matter. Guess who says that? It's the people without experience. It's this reading of the market that even going against the textbook, going against like the full on textbook play here is this is a bearish order flow. I'm recognizing based off of, you know, I've been doing this 12 years, 12 years of intuition, experience, daily doing this every day. 
understanding context, reading the market, and then making an informed decision of even though I'm seeing this, I still think we're going to go higher. I could be wrong. We could drop from here, but I want to see higher and I actually want to see this pump up further. Okay. And I, you know, made this even clearer over on Twitter before this. Okay. I was trying to kind of, kind of nice. And they said, you know, thanks. The call was just in time. But as I even said over on Twitter, bullish wanting to see higher prices to come. So that just goes to show you, we had that daily and there was no short trade to be had there as we pushed through that level, all stemming, in my opinion, from this really strong bounce that we saw on the stock market. And there we go. Exactly as I predicted, team, the level was not front run and we will go higher. And here we were at the time then trading above that daily level. OK, so it's very nice indeed. And that lines us up to, you know, what we're going to start to look at, at next. And that was after the live stream ended. You know, people were still asking about the daily and I made it very clear. I am not shorting this daily. I have not taken any short trades yet. OK, we have our next levels above us. So for now, I remain bearish. <laughs> I remain bullish. <laughs> I better not get that wrong. So for now, I remain bullish back in zero short trades locally. And you know, I've closed my last two shorts and I'm only in long trades. I want to see higher at this point in time, right? And I've also, of course, if you aren't aware, I mean, I've made my team aware of this previously, but I have closed like two major swing short trades as well. So, you know, for me, yeah, this was a, a, an example of seeing that daily, knowing not to short it, looking for higher. And well, then we got this lovely move to the upside. OK, so what would be going on here? About 10 minutes and I'm going to get into what's happening now. I'm just going to add on some analysis that we have from here. So the first thing that I'll talk about is obviously we had these bigger targets above us, which was around 24 to 24,500. We obviously did not quite reach that and we've rejected at around 23,800. I can tell you the reason of this. When we pull off Fibonacci, there's two Fibonacci's that we can use here that gave us this Fibonacci level. The first is the negative Fibonacci from this low to this high. OK, so from this low to this high, we can see we come up into the negative 0 0.618 Fibonacci level of resistance. Also, if you pull an extension from this high to this low, you've come into the extension of the 0 0.236 Fibonacci. So actually, you had some confluence here, as you can see, high to low. We'll put this on our expansion and we can see we come up into the 0 0.236 on the 0 dot, um, negative uh, 0 0.618 resistance. So this gave us a little bit of, uh, you know, resistance here for the for the pullback. And where are we pulling back to? We're pulling back to our range point of point of control. OK, so I understand why we went through the daily. I made it very clear to my team. I'm not going to short this level. I want to see higher. We then do get higher. We in the end bounce off of or reject from our Fibonacci levels and we get a pullback now to the range point of control. OK, so that's all the talk through that I wanted to do here initially. And now I'm going to start to talk you through what I am looking at next and what we can approach the rest of this day. Well, the rest of what are we on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, going into Monday. OK, so for the next few days of price action here, I'm going to explain what I'm looking at. One thing that I will say to you right now before I move on to that is if you actually want to see my higher term time frame uh, Bitcoin Elliott wave count, OK, where the higher term time frame target has been hit. OK, down there around fifteen thousand um, dollars. Hit the like button right now. Hit that like button. <laughs> Take the notification bell on the channel. Subscribe. And if this video reaches over two thousand five hundred likes, I will do this for you. OK, so this is my high term time frame. Elliott wave count bullish on Bitcoin, where the target was around fifteen thousand dollars. This really can be decisive for starting the bull market. This was a prediction I actually made one year ago. So this is from a year ago. OK, but in this prediction, I was looking for this fifth wave down and this was my bullish scenario. OK, and so if you want to see that, OK, a you know, of course, now an updated viewpoint of this as this was a year old prediction. But if you want to see the new uh, updated bullish Elliott wave count that I have for the bottom being in on Bitcoin, then all you need to do is hit that like button. 2,500, I'll bring that to you. OK, if you don't want to <laughs> wait for that, then, of course, I've already covered this in my last Champions live stream for the champions. So if you want to wait, don't want to wait around for 2,500 likes, then you can just come back over to the last Champions live stream that i done where you can get access to that Elliott wave count, where you can obviously not only that, get access to the live trading, the daily live streams, the educational modules. we got live streams going on right now, right, where you can look at all of this uh, every single day, along as uh, along with, of course, our course where we've got new Atis and advanced strategy modules. That's all I wanted to bring your attention to there. 
And if you want to see that, you know what to do. Hit that like button <laughs> or just join chartchampions.com. <laughs> Up to you the way you want to go about it. And uh, for everybody else, now we're going to move on for what is next to come. So you can see here, I have a few levels marked out. Uh, from, in my opinion, the bigger level, what we'd be looking at below us. FYI, the way that this has ended is currently a failed auction of the high. So if you know, yesterday I had this channel marked out, right? Channel high, channel low. In the end, we never took the channel low and we took the channel high, but it ended in this scenario where we simply come back above the channel high and we're back down into the range. So this is a failed auction of the mini range high. It's not a major failed auction. It's kind of a mini level, right? Because it's a mini range, but nevertheless, it has happened. And now we're pulling back to the range point of control. So if we lose this range point of control, we actually have this zone below us. This is quite a large zone in my opinion, but I'm going to explain, well, basically we have about six levels of confluence and it is coming in at a bit of a zone, but we have like the range value area low. We actually have a anchored VWAP pull coming in here. We have, of course, the daily level. We have the, a daily naked point of control. So we're, we're talking about, you know, really four or five strong levels of confluence here. So that's if we lose the range POC, right? then this would be our next level below us, which I'm very much interested in. And it's going to be the same as yesterday. If you want my live thought processes in the time of when we hit these levels, well, then you're going to just simply have to join the Discord. Like yesterday when we were hitting the daily, I made it very clear I'm not shorting this yet. And like... I'm looking for a long here, right? If you want my live thought process of, am I actually gonna take that long? Because I always trade based off the reaction. If there is a no reaction, then take no trade. If there's a good reaction, then there's a trade, right? This is my next long opportunity. But if there's no good trade setup that actually comes to fruition, then I won't take it. And I'll look back down towards that 22,100, 22,100, right? And for me, this is still range bound. And if we hold these support levels, then I'll still be remaining bullish, looking for 24,000 plus. Okay, I might, can easily go through this, but I'd be looking then for at least $24,000, right? So I said at the start of this video, I'd answer the question of, do I still remain bullish on Bitcoin? My, my answer is yes, I, I still remain on this medium term time frame bullishness. It's because, yeah, we're getting rejections, we're getting pullbacks, but we still haven't broke any higher term time frame market structure here. We're still on this strong four hour uptrends. Again, that has not changed yet. We're at the same time, of course, this bounce that we were seeing on the ES, just look how perfect that was. We came down to the point of control, failed auction this, and then we pushing all the way back up to our whole, old, well now old daily level, right? But for me, this is a very nice bounce on the ES. And um, yeah, this, this for me is a very nice bounce on the ES. So while we're still seeing the strength in the bounces on the ES, while I'm still expecting DXY to go lower, I still remain bearish on the DXY. I actually remain bullish on the ES. Thus, I'm also still looking for the longs here on Bitcoin. I am, you know, happy to remain with this bias until proven otherwise. And so for me, this all comes down to, you can see how I'm like making my plans right. So I do my analysis. Okay, I mark out my levels. I then look at my correlated assets. I then look at the market context. I look at the market psychology. I look at the people I'm trading against. What are they? they want, you know, what's the average trader thinking? They're generally wrong. And I'm then moving like a like a ninja of the charts, right? So like yesterday, I was in a you know, well, two days ago, I was in short positions. I'm not holding on to that bearish bias saying, oh, I'm in a short. I'm just only going to look for shorts here. I'm not going to look for longs. I'm bearish, bearish, bearish. No, I'm saying, hey, I have now changed my bias into bullish. I am looking for higher prices to come. You know, I'm not stuck in my ways. I'm reacting to the new data as it comes and I'm able to move like a move like an injury in this market and just come in, come out, come in, come out, make money, okay? Take profit one, move to the next idea, move to the next trade setup, okay? That's what you wanna be. You wanna be agile as a trader, able to read the market and react to the signs and new data given to you. And even in slower term time frame scenarios, I think yesterday was just the perfect scenario. Again, if you want to watch it, you can watch it back in this contenders live stream with myself and Igor. The thumbnail a bit of fun. This was, of okay, course, a very you. professional live stream. Um, so if you want to watch that back, uh, please do over on the website. But I just emphasize one more time that it's this understanding of order flow that you can only truly get through experience and time. And a lot of people might argue with that in my opinion, facts, but they have their own motives for arguing with that fact, right? Experience is absolutely key. And once you've been, you know, it's a, it's some people it's, it's hard to imagine, but imagine you can be doing this for 10 years. Again, you might now be losing money, struggling, but you've potentially only been doing this like five years, right? So you gotta remember that this is a realistic expectation to get that true intuition, read order flow, understand that this is textbook-like, really bearish, but still 
understand we're going higher. This is something that I understand through time, experience, and statistics. My statistics building obviously very key for that, right? So this is not to put a down on you. This is not to say, oh yeah, no, you're not going to be profitable until until you've reached such a time. You can be profitable with less time, of course. But to have that understanding and intuition where you're in the zone, you're you're understanding and reading the market without even thinking. I think that's the difference between being profitable and having true intuition, right? I think there is a there is a difference between that. And to have that true intuition uh, of just just reading the market so calmly, so peacefully, even live on stream, right? Just coming in there and saying, no, actually, even though we got bearish order flow here, I'm still looking for higher. And that is something that, that will come with time. So this is not to make you sad. This is not to make you think, oh my God, I have to spend 10 years doing this. And let's just say it will come. It will come with time and experience. And until you got that, of course, I'm here to help you. I'm on your side and you can listen to my insights and experience and gain knowledge from my thought processes while you don't actually have that experience right so i'm more than happy to help that i'm more than happy to give my insights and share that knowledge with you i truly appreciate you watching these videos for me i do this for you i have no ulterior motive. i'm doing these videos truly because i want to help you i want to see you improve i want to help you change your life period you know i could retire tomorrow i have 40 millions in the bank right it's not about the money for me i'm doing this because i really want to help and it's as simple as that so i hope that i have managed to provide some insights, how I traded this, the next levels I'm looking at, okay? And as we're starting to test the middle of this channel now, I'm going to go back to my team. I'm going to go back to trading. I'm going to wrap it up by saying this. I hope you've thoroughly enjoyed. If you have, you know what to do. Subscribe, tick the notification bell so you don't miss another one and give a little like on the video. 2,500, I'll do the Elliott Wave Camp. If you want to see more of me or the rest of the team in the meantime, you know what to do. Chargechampions.com. Get over here, sign up to a contender or a champion membership, and you can start to watch our educational content now. And if you want the live trading alongside it, that's for the champions, right? For everyone else, thank you ever so much. Hope you have thoroughly enjoyed this video, and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you, and goodbye. Ending, actually, of course, with the legal trade disclaimer. Sorry, that just make sure you fully understand this. Demo paper trades on your accounts and no financial advice. Cheers, everybody. Thank you, and it's me signing out. Goodbye. I love you. <laughs>